health, uh, then, uh, you know, it's all you, baby. All right, we're back on the Mana Symbol channel. I'm going to play a little bit of this sweet Dice Factory list from the one, the only, the legend in the uh, prison community, Susurus. Susurus? Uh, somebody's going to correct me because thank you, Internet. So uh, this is a very interesting creation. It's the first time I'm playing uh, these cards with Devourer of Destinies and Ugin's Labyrinth. I love this deck. Uh, the mana base is four or 12 Tron lands, four Urza's Saga, four Ugin's Labyrinth, one Inventor's Fair, one Forest. So that's nice and tight. We got six of our zero drops that pick up charge counters. Only one surge node, so not a lot of surge nodes to go around, but four core tappers because we can, of course, play them on turn one with an Ugin's Labyrinth. We also have the four Devour of Destinies, a Cityscape Leveler, and two Kozilek the Great Distortions. These are imprints for Ugin's Labyrinth, and you might say, well, oh, mathematically, that's a little bit low, um, which you'd be 100% correct about. However, we have four Serum Powders, so we're going to aggressively mulligan to have powerful um, opening plays. Uh, we'll be able to play Ugin's Labyrinth into a Everflowing Chalice or, or some selection of our, our early game stuff and potentially have a turn to Karn, One Ring, or Mystic Forge. Uh, and of course, the goal uh, in this deck is to assemble a combination of cards, including... Paradox Engine and the One Ring, which essentially means every time you play a spell, you get to draw two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven cards. Um, so as long as you draw enough cheap cards, you're going to be able to keep digging through your deck. Um, how are you going to cast things? Well, if you have an Everflowing Chalice or an Astral Cornucopia with a few counters on it, um, then that's going to untap every time you play a spell, and that's going to allow you access to the mana that you need to uh, end the game, usually with Karn, the Great Creator. Um, although we have other options. Because um, like the Great Distortion is going to be super castable uh, in a lot of games. Um, and then you're going to draw um, draw up to seven cards in hand. So that can also win you the game. And he also has the ability to discard a card with Mana Value X, counter a target spell with Mana Value X. We're going to cover a lot of the metagame just with some ones, twos, threes, uh, and some zeros. Um, it's an interesting choice uh, to have the two Kozilex, but I'm sure uh, that Susurus knows what he's doing. He's also got one Skitty Scape level remain and one in the um, in the Karn board. Uh, and we've got a few cards in the sideboard that are not uh, just one ofs. We've got two Trinospheres, four Stone Brains, and one Cavern of Souls that we can board in with our four Expedition maps to uh, make uncounterable Eldrazi or Cityscape Levelers, or even a Walking Ballista. Yeah, Bloomborough is going to be interesting. So we've got a pretty close opener here, um, like close to being playable, but we're on the draw, and I really think we need to do more powerful things. So we're going to Serum Powder this hand, losing one Urza's Mind to Ugin's Labyrinths. Uh, this has an Urza's Tower, two Core Tappers, Serum Powder, Manifold, Key, Kozilek, one Ring. We're going to Powder again. So we're uh, definitely increasing our Tron density here. This one has two Devourer of Destinies, Ugin's Labyrinth, Chalice, and two-thirds of Tron. On the draw in the dark, I mean, we're starting off with a setup where we get to have uh, four mana on turn two. We've got double Devourer of Destiny to set us up. So let's, let's rock this. This seems like this is what we came here to do. And if this is not good enough, then uh, hey, that's what it is. Okay, probably... A little bit of frog, Snoop Froggy Frog on the other side of the table there. Interesting interaction with Devourer of Destiny and the rest of this deck is that because we're playing Karn, um, which is what I'm going to put on top, uh, we can actually wish for any of the things we exile. So if any of them are one ofs, uh, we're still good to go. Um, Karn or Mystic Forge? Uh, Mystic Forge is obscene. Uh, there's only one of it in this deck. Uh, it's kind of the fourth one ring as the fourth one ring is actually on our sideboard i'm gonna put the mystic forge on top instead of karn um the blue black deck typically is gonna have no way to remove it um and they're both susceptible to the same kind of counter magic uh devour of destinies is not 
the best actual like spell it's it's more of like this obscene thing that you get to have in your opening hands and and then stack your deck with but i will say that like this kind of matchup is uh is devour of destiny is a great like thing to have where it helps your draws be more powerful and then actually gets to be somewhat okay um oh this is not frog this is black red okay so this this draw is obscene so hopefully um we're just gonna bury them with this mystic forge that they have no chance of solving and then this devour of destinies can of course um exile their necro impotence i, I still don't know the name of that card um i'm just gonna keep calling it the, the unglued card mystic forge here being a little bit better than one ring in that it doesn't actually draw us cards uh, no, it's Necro Impotence, Carrion Lynch, and I, I will hear no. We're not playing Kick Command in this deck, Noble Rooster, which is a very interesting choice, um, considering how good I think that card is. Surge Note is fine. Saga is not going to do anything for me. Uh, I do have the option of using Expedition Map to shuffle that Saga away um, rather than using the Mystic Forge, but I'm not going to have a lot of mana left over afterwards. The question is, is there anything I'd rather do this turn than play the play and search with the Expedition Map? No, we probably need to set up the mana. So what I'm going to do here is go play Surge Node, activate Surge Node, play Map, activate Map. Um, and the next turn will be good to cast Devour of Destiny. So let's go play the Surge node. Activate Surge node. Play map. Activate map. And I'll have uh, one mana left over after this, which is just enough to play this expedition map off the top of my library. Just like we drew it up. Hey, look, it's Urza Saga again. Yeah, KCOM is is a very frustrating thing. Uh, I just call it Kozlex Command, or I, I, if you want to, you can call it uh, KCOM versus, we can call it COCOM. Um, obviously, Kozlex versus Coligans. Like, I get it that it's, I, I get that they're the same letters, but KCOM is Coligans Command in my mind. So if you say COCOM, then that's Kozlex Command. It doesn't really matter. But I do think um, the actual KCOM, Cole Against Command, is a playable card right now with the proliferation of these Tron decks that are pretty artifact heavy. We do have access to this Devourer, but let's just see if we can win the game this turn. Uh, not like that we can't. Uh, still have access to enough mana here to cast it if I map first. Uh, uh, grab another tower. Still Saga on top, that's fine. So let's put this Devourer back in my hand. There he goes. Pow. Get him. But yeah, Emrakul's command or Ulamog's command, I think, would have been preferable. But what are you going to do? I mean, there really isn't. It's too late now. Oh, the March of Wretched sorrowed my my Devourer of Destinies. Well, somehow I think we're going to be okay. 
uh, in the words of Dr. Cox, somehow by the grace of God, I think we're going to be all right. <laughs> so it's got menace. What the hell? Uh, let's play a one ring. Opponents staying in this game. I uh, applaud their their chutzpah. Thanks for the follow, friend. So whoever wants to go for it, you know, bring me that, bring me that head. You get a donkey. Opponent's really holding on to hope over there. You got to, um, you got to respect the. What am I gonna call it? Hustle? I don't know. <laughs> There's the thing that wins me in the game. So I think the shortest route to victory here is uh, play Karn, untap all my stuff. Oh, they're just going to scoop. I was going to get um, Sundering Titan and just take them off all their lands and have 20 power in play. No, sorry, 19 power in play. Sorry, I should be specific. Okay, uh, on the draw against Black Red, uh, let's sort by mana value. Uh, here, uh, we don't need Stone Brains. Don't re... Well, Trinus here is probably pretty good here. Um I don't think I need the main deck cityscape leveler. Although I guess, you know, we don't want to shave down too far on the seven drops. Um, we are going to get slammed, I assume, by break the ices. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have any like artifact destruction per se. Um, I don't mind serum powders in these matchups. Uh, I you know the cra I think the thing to cut might be Paradox Engine. Because I feel like a lot of the time we can just beat them. And Paradox Engine's only really very good with the one ring. Although, like, you know, that's how we like win win. Um I feel like we can kind of mid-range them out a lot of the time though. It seems weird to me, but also correct, so I don't know. Chat, tell me I'm wrong. Th this hand is fantastic. We are missing something to throw the search, uh, the charge counters on, but I don't mind that too much. I really want to lead on Saga here. Not going to, but... Opponent took a mulligan? Yes, they did. Super duper. Getting thought seize or grief? Nope. Well, that's that's just super. And getting break the iced. Yeah. Oh, and then griefed. Going out of two cards in hand over there. Probably have land and necro impotence as their last two, I would guess. Definitely going to lose the Mystic Forge here, I'd imagine. Okay, a little tardy to the party, but actually a really great draw because it gives me two mana. Two. 
Oh, that's not cool. Surgical my Ugin's Labyrinth. That's disgusting. All right, so now we desperately need to draw land for turn. Got it. Break the ice surgical extraction. When did Tron hurt you, opponent? Show me on the doll where the Tron player hurt you. Oh, right. It was me. Sorry. It was, it was me in game one. My bad. Sorry, everyone. It's not a land. Okay. I mean, with what I have, I can get out of this situation. So, because uh, we'll get something to put the surge node counters on, and I will have uh, the one mana to start that going. And from that point, uh, world's my oyster. Um, of course, the question is, how fast is their clock? Land? Not a land, but it is a great draw because that means this gets me manifold key. So now I play cornucopia on zero. Charge it. And so next turn we start charging faster than I otherwise would. Land draw would be huge for us. Oh, we're getting griefed. That's no problem, actually. Pitching soul spike. Oh, this is fine. I don't give a shit about this. They'd probably take the core tapper. I would imagine. Uh, I would take the core tapper if I were them. But they took the... Okay. That's... This could be a disaster for them. It's a very... Because... Yeah. 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 That's... That's bad. That's really bad for them. So if I tap this for two and then untap it, I have access to three mana. Uh, I don't think that does anything extra for me right now. So let's just play the core tapper past the turn. Um, probably discourages them from attacking with the Bowmasters. No, it doesn't. Uh, I'm just going to take the hit here. I know I could block with the core tapper, but I think it's a lot more valuable. Uh, I have nine mana potentially this turn if I wanted it. Uh, I don't need it, so I'm not going to do that. Um, sorry, this is better done otherwise. Is it? I don't think it actually matters much. So we do that. Tap this. Untap it. Tap this. Uh, I can map for Inventors' Fair right now. Um, I could get a Saga, but I think Inventors' Fair is the way to go because then I just get to uh, whatever threat I want faster. Like I already have enough mana. Although, Saga now, Inventors' Fair later uh, lets me put in some Chonky Boys. It's probably worth it. So we cast this multi kick for three. I have access to a truly obscene amount of mana next turn. Um, cityscape levelers in exile. Uh oh. Children? Huan Ring. Okay, well, we'll probably get to a Karn reasonably quickly.
So we go charge. Okay, so currently in exile is my cityscape leveler, um, which means what I have is, I and my Mystic Forge, right? Mystic Forge is in my graveyard. Yeah, it is. That's what I would want, but I can't get it. Um, I kind of have to get one ring here, which is unfortunate with them having a Bowmasters in play and their own one ring. Um, but I imagine that I will pretty quickly be able to overcome them. Now, the question is, do I want to manifold key any of my mana? I don't because I want to, I actually want to manifold key my one ring while it's, um, while I have protection. So let's charge the chalice. Sack this now. Get a one ring. Get my protection, draw my card. Bowmasters, whatever you want, that isn't me. It's fine. Uh, I should have surge noted at some point along here, that's fine. Second one ring is, is a huge draw because now they won't kill me the next turn either. There's a Karn. Uh, which would be a big draw if they didn't have such a big orc army token, but that's fine. Uh, definitely screwed up my sequencing a bit because I should have been able to charge here, but I don't imagine it's going to be a big problem um, unless they get their necro impotence this turn, draw a bunch of cards, and soul spike me to death. Which I'm not super worried about. Uh, that should be working Bruno Ferria. So let me, yeah, the bot left as it loves to do. I got you covered, friend. That's a shieldred. Luckily, I already have the Karn in my hand, so we're good. Um, so go to seven. Uh, don't need another construct. Oh, this? Hold on. I can just kill them, right? With an unblockable construct and a giant walking ballista? Okay. Kind of doesn't matter what I grab here, so let's do that. So I have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 mana. Making the construct unblockable is three. Seven, seven ballista with the remaining four. No, because I have to play Karn and wish for it, but that's the remaining. So, and then it's going to make it a, okay. So we, we just do this and we kill them. Uh, so play Karn. Get my good friend Chris. Christopher Walken Ballista. Uh, go tap for seven. Un oh. Yeah, hold on. I have to use this to make it unblockable. So I use this to make it unblockable. I think we have exact lethal. Because that costs three mana. And then I have four, five, six remaining. Which gives me a three, three. And it's going to be an eight, eight. So unless they have a free piece of interaction here, we're good. And they seem F6. So let's find out. That was uh, almost a problem, but it wasn't. Of which I am glad. One, two, three. Pew! Nice little 2-0 in the first match with Dice Factory. Thanks for hanging out, folks. Hope you're having a good time. If you want to watch some legacy streaming, uh, Caleb DMTG, one of the largest magic streamers of all time, is live right now.
Leyline of the Boys. It's a great screen name. So on the draw in the dark. No Gigantha revealed yet. All right, in the dark, turn four Tron. I mean, I've got everything I need to win from that point, but uh, can't possibly imagine this is gonna be good enough, so let's mulligan. Okay, uh, this is better. Not great. If I'm keeping this, I'm going to bottom Astral Cornucopia. And we're just praying that we draw something good to go with this Paradox Engine. Um, once again, not great. Uh, a lot of medium draws in the deck from this point, too. All right, we're going to mulligan again. On the draw, power plant, tower, chalice, Karn. So that's pretty good. So I think I'm, I'm going to keep this bottom serum powder, cornucopia, and then devour might get us somewhere good. Okay. 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 I like it. And we're against a Tron deck. So that's good news because Karn might shut down some of their... Um, some of their cards. Um, generally, spe generally speaking, in my experience, whoever, whoever's on the draw in this matchup is just pretty toast in game one. Um, it does depend on your specific list. This is not a super impressive opening, so that's good. Uh, we are looking for a mine. But if I wasn't looking for a mine, uh, Core Tapper would mean uh, that I can Karn with an extra mana. So that's okay. Uh, Mystic Forge and Wondering, obviously good for being good. But I think we're hedging our bets that this Karn is where we want to be. So let's go turn one power plant go. Mm, that's a game over. Very unfortunately, we found another person who's playing an Eldrazi deck that has Karn in it. Uh, and that, yeah, that's a lights out for us. So this is this is bad news in general. Not a lot of people are playing uh, Eldrazi slash Tron decks that have Karn at the moment. But uh, our opponent is, and that's very bad for us. Uh What am I? What am I? What am I taking out here? Because basically, we we pull in all four stone brains. I'm pretty sure because we have to stone brain their Karns. It's kind of a non-negotiable. Uh, I want to have enough mana to do that fairly quickly. I would like to keep these things that pitch to. So I think again we're going paradox engine out because again this is not going to be about trying to combo that way. I imagine. And 
could put one stone rain back in the sideboard for uh, Karn to wish for, but I don't. Maybe that's good. So this is turn three Tron, and it drops in a Karn. We also have Devourer of Destinies to try to get us going better. Uh, it's turn three Tron, assuming that this helps us find a, a Tron piece. Um, but it, if it doesn't, um, Core Tapper will get us to the turn three Karn with, with this hand. So turn three Karn on the play, I think, has got to be. We're just going to assume that's good enough. Yeah, absolutely, Mirror. I'm just trying to talk about the ins and outs of why it would be a keep versus wouldn't be uh there's the power plant that i wanted power plant or other tron land is what we wanted there yield so turn two we can actually go uh land core tapper chalice charge the charge the chalice and then activate the map to get our tron so we could uh karn with an extra five mana which is a big Big difference. Need a mine here. And it's a good thing we put that uh, stone brain into the sideboard. Because that should be lights out here. They're off it. <laughs> Who wants to name a card? Plus two mace? You are already dead. No. Uh, bonus round. Oh, not legal. Okay. Um, or not on Magic Online. Um, good card names. Tain. Um, ass Assen's trophy um, Abbot of Carol Keep sure now the hard game I mean this is turn three Karn going to be hard for me to say no to this especially with devour of destinies in the hand uh yeah they multi six i'm gonna keep this and then we, we just have to hope they stumble that's what the matchup is and and uh if you don't like it then play a different deck okay they have a devour on their six yeah leyline of the boys is a quality quality username i miss you ryan too carrion lich it was such a weird ban okay so i have turn three tron without um having to do anything for it uh i'm actually gonna have enough mana to go karn into stone brain uh so uh we'll see 
if that matters. Well, I understand that, Shauna, but I... No, I understand it, Mir. The, the thing was, it was just such a weird timing when they banned it because the Orion deck wasn't problematic as any more than it had been. And in fact, when they banned Orion, I, I remember the Orion decks had already been good for a long time and it kind of hit their like medium period. Like it was just a very strange timing. Like it just didn't, yeah, the reason they banned it was for player dexterity, but that had already been a problem for so long. Uh, this. It's not that much of a problem, but it's a problem. So they can start stone raining me. So I won't be able to, no, they can't because I forgot their coding off. Unless they also have a cityscape leveler. So I'm not going to grab cityscape leveler here because that would tip them off onto what to grab. Uh, I will, oh, I can grab needle and turn off the Karns. Is that psycho mode? It is, but I feel like. I feel like maybe I have a better chance doing that. No, it's when they say dexterity error, Shauna, it's not just shuffling the 80 card deck. That's not what they're talking about. I mean, that is part of the problem, but I think we have to needle, which sounds insane, but I think think so do i needle coating the coating's off because i have karn ballista the karn can't ballista karn they have a karn also i have only one mana no my only option here is to get something to cast for next turn or um i get needle i know they have a devourer of destinies in hand too so that doesn't get me like a head uh but if i can attack down the karn with core tapper then in theory i can win with uh karn needle send it i mean we haven't seen that much of their they've got two devour of destinies in exile you know what let's do it You want to get nuts, opponent? Let's get nuts. Oh, no. They also have big dum-dums. Because we have the the uh, the uh, Kozleks to draw into. I really hope they don't have something similar. Hopefully, this is just like a 5-5 five -five Ballista. Uh, that's not good. Uh, Chad, they have a good card. Not fair. And this is just a matter of being on the draw. This is what we are pinned into doing and... Uh, we have a main deck leveler. Did I sideboard it out? I did do. So, we we have a main deck leveler. It's in our sideboard. Yeah. Uh, although at the moment, like, it wouldn't help, right? Because I, my, my Karn is off because of Needle. But it would turn on my artifacts. 
And it take a long time on this. Eight. Do they have a cityscape leveler? No, it seems like an X spell. Is it another? Yeah. Okay. So they're looking for something in particular. The, the thing is, Carrie and Lich, uh, the problem with Battle of Wiss is a tournament error. Um, like obviously for legacy, if they're allowing it, they're allowing it, but that's let battle of wits is, and should be soft banned from tournament play. I wish it wasn't the case cause it's a very cool deck, but unfortunately there's just no way you can possibly fully randomize battle of wits in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, well, that's a, that's bad news. Okay. They brought a gun to the knife fight. Jeez. Well, unfortunately, we're going to lose to the deck that has the uh, Kozilex commands. And that's, you know what? That's totally fair. I have to block for Karn here because allowing them to have liquid metal coating would would effectively take me out of the game. Essentially, I have to draw a Devourer of Destinies here, which is not, yeah. And they had the one in their hand. Damn, that's so close. If I had a bridge, it would be great right now. Okay, what artifacts can I get? I don't think any of them are useful. No. All right, we'll scoop it up there. We're not winning that game from that point. So a close one there against Leyline and the boys. Uh, unfortunately, they won the die roll in the first uh, game, and that's pretty much where the whole thing went. Um, but I felt pretty in that, considering that we are much more vulnerable to Karn than they are. Tron Neurons would be a good name for an MTG-themed Neo Swing Band. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, Shauna, that was the first thing I thought of, but then they just beat us by uh, getting their own. Like, I feel like we lose that. Okay, so I'm on the play here. Do you feel wizards put all formats in the passenger seat to commander when considering cards tonight for regular sets? No, not at all. Next question. Uh, uh, Shauna, uh, I believe you have a question. So in the dark, I think we powder this. It's just a very medium hand. So in the dark, I think we um, powder this. It has no lands. Three Karns out. But high tron density there's the last karn so this is turn to chalice core tapper and then we have karn after that it's not great but in the dark i think this is fine i think commander does get too much consideration um yeah i i, I would agree that commander gets too much consideration um 
if <laughs> so i started playing magic at a very interesting time where a lot of things were changing um in big ways big 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 ways opponent is multiplied um one of the things that happened in onslaught block is a lot of stuff was changed to um, be like each opponent so, because they were trying to like uh, emphasize multiplayer play. Um, the the thing is at the time there was just, it, it was just a completely different world. Uh, and then of course we flipped into the new um, frame and then the new, uh, like the new power level, the obscene power level that resulted when we had uh mirrored in uh and then of course the crash into kamigawa so uh i i started out with just an insane ride in terms of the game and uh yeah like since then creatures have become completely obscene in my mind uh i'll take this hit here I don't really care about the ocelot getting out of control. I think I can beat that. Um, so, I mean, the game has changed a lot, but I feel like mostly for the better. And so the, the commander stuff has never really bothered me in a significant way, if that makes any kind of sense. Okay, that's that's a very good draw. Tribal cats, yeah. So if I play Karn, what am I getting? I could get Paradox Engine. And then what happens is next turn I go play Paradox Engine play core tapper hope that i can cast kozilek because this would be on three because I, well i have ensnaring bridge here but it's not good enough yet i could put myself down to three cards and no two cards in hand still not good enough how big of a ballista could i make uh this this turn is a one one so that's not good enough If I charge this now, it also could be really bad if they have a static prison. I want to, I'm probably just supposed to get the one ring, huh? Just don't overthink it. I don't have to overcommit on anything by doing that. Uh, Boros is playing uh, Static Prison, so they absolutely can beat the One Ring. Um, but I think it's the thing that's going to put me the farthest ahead the fastest on its own and doesn't rely on anything else going well. Okay, taking a little little gamble aru. Chthonian nightmare. Wild. Okay. Not doing a whole lot for them here, but that's fine. Still time walk with draw a card? Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Do I want more mana for post ring this turn? I think so. Because it could, could translate to big, big things for me. 
It's not going to, but it could have. So next turn I can play Kozlek. I don't know how much it does for me, but boy, boy, can I do it. Mardu means no main deck moon. I mean, moon doesn't really bother me, right? Like with the hand I have. They're spending black mana. They have another Chthonian nightmare. Oh, maybe they have Bowmasters. Which I could exile with Devour and then draw. Chalice Castle draws the Under Moon. I don't know what that means. Chalice ca Oh, Chal Everflowing Chalice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They're killing their own cat? They could have killed my Core Tabber, but whatever. Oh, they want to flip their Johnny. Of course. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget about the fact that this card is in any way relevant. They do have a red permanent, so now they get to shoot my core tower. Got it. Flipping Johnny's. Okay. Oh. think I possibly just won the game. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have exactly enough. Cool. Uh, there's going to be a couple of Bowmaster pings, but then I think we win. So 6, play this. Draw fine blam I said blam chat oh my god uh boy I hope I don't somehow lose this but it's very nearly possible. Okay, no longer possible. Good. One deck draw, please. One deck please mm, I need to find a Karn what's the wincon we've got Karn and a Ballista I mean we don't you don't need to try hard you could you could you could play a myriad of win conditions it's still didn't draw a Karn somehow it's fine Wait, didn't I exile all my cards? One, two, three, four. Yeah, all my cards are dead. I remember mentioning that earlier this game. Okay, then we're just going to have to destroy everything relevant that they have and put down an insurmountable board. That seems possible. Seems very doable. Okay, first up, play Devourer of Destinies. It's going to be an interesting little game because of that. And by interesting, I mean I had to work hard for a single turn. And by hard, I mean I had to think for a half second. This is a destroy.
There should be another like Kozlak. Hold on. There's got to be another one ring somewhere, right? I don't see one in my hand. How come there's no one rings? Are they? They're just in my library. Yeah, we're gonna play Mystic Forge. I'm not worried about it. I'm just shocked that there's like this many one rings in my deck right now. Like that's insane. I'm not worried about managing to get to them. That's that's not going to be a problem. There we go. I'll keep this one ring, please. Okay. I could play more things, but I really don't care. Uh, I will keep some Urza Sagas. Okay, there we go. Two turns. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I can make an un unblockable uh, Kozilek. So, like, I'm not worried about it. Static Prison. Hey, Spider Space. Ajani. Doesn't gain any life, does it? Nope. Unfortunately, I don't have a two drop in my hand. Not a lot of two drops in the deck. A Johnny? That's right. Do you want to uh, attack with some cats, opponent? We don't. Feels like a mistake to me, but whatever. Lose life equal to the number of counters on the one ring. Okay. Trigger. Bye, Johnny. Didn't make it unblockable. The thing is, they're going to have blockers next turn anyway. I don't think there's any way around this taking two turns. This is going to take two turns. And I just don't see that as a problem. Is that is that fair? Six, Like, I could have made it unblockable. It wouldn't kill them any more or less. They would take a big hit from one of my creatures because they had enough creatures to block the rest of them. I think just using the key and casting something, using the key against to take less time than your opponent. I'm just not worried about time in general in this matchup. Maybe I should be Bash's Bay, but generally speaking, it's very easily to one tramples. Yeah. Like, it just... Uh, I don't... I maybe I win the game in one turn, but they're also burning a lot of clock by trying to live here. Yeah, like we're on garbage time, and I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a Trinisphere matchup. Uh, 
keep the main deck cityscape leveler. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Uh, obviously, Kozlek was pretty okay there, but I don't think we keep it. Although, with Trinisphere coming in, I want the maximum number of things to... I mean, this is the Paradox Engine Out matchup. I feel like a lot of these matchups are Paradox Engine Out, which... Maybe that's just like the card that goes out when you sideboard a lot of the time. Obviously on the draw, Trinisphere is not that great. So maybe we just roll main deck and just try to combo on like turn four or so. They're not likely to aggro us out. And we do, we do want to draw like a very stable hand here. Much like playing against like black red mid range or anything like that, you you just want to be able to like play through Blood Moon. And the funny thing is, even though this is a Tron deck with four Urza Sagas, generally this deck plays great through Blood Moon because you have so many um like just random mana sources. Like Serum Powder, a lot of people make fun of Serum Powder for being like a three mana artifact that taps for one colorless, but I cannot begin to count the number of games that I've won with exactly that function. This, this is the kind of hand I'm talking about. This is the kind of hand I want here because I feel like they're going to overly lean into trying to like beat the fact that I'm playing Tron. Remember when they gave us a cool paradox engine for commander and then they banned it? Yeah. I mean, as a commander hater, <coughs> that's the kind of, part of the ban list that i would completely ignore i hate the commander ban list I, I i don't want to get into this because i don't play commander but as someone who sees it from the sidelines and like appreciates what it's supposed to be i think i i just i hate the commander ban list more than anything it just makes no sense to me it doesn't make any sense to me the fact that they call it what they call it like it's not even that they call it like a suggested ban list which i think they should they don't and it i just i can't uh, is that my Tron? Boy. Boy, is that my Tron. On the flip side, I have such a powerful handful of mana stuff. <sighs> kind of want to just take this one ring. So, I'm a gonna. I don't have... One thing that I'm looking for here, which is take the Tron. Just always take the Tron, huh? All right, fine. Party pooper. I know, I know. Tron with the Devourer of Destiny is probably going to get me to the mid game. In the mid game, I should just run them over. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was just an extra mine. I was like, did I did I completely mess this up? And the answer was no. What on the Pioneer ban list do you object to, Shauna? Oh, that's that's fine. You keep on loving me, baby. I suppose if they Blood Moon this turn, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, Pioneer is very much a real format, and like it, it's on the Pro Tour. But like, I'm ignoring that comment. Um, just to ask, like, what on the Pioneer ban list do you object to? Because I think it's pretty good right now. Oh, my. Okay. That's a real card. Can down, uh, discard that. Yeah, like, Copter's not banned anymore. 
Listen, Hitachi, fighting games aren't real either, but they, they cause a lot of problems. What does this guy do? do I think the Bowmaster is the most dangerous thing here. So I can discard the forest, no problem. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks for the follow, whoever that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take my forest, I don't give a toot. I'll lose two life. Zangief is real and cannot hurt me. Chun Li, on the other hand. E Honda. Yeah, Ballista being banned in Pioneer does drive me absolutely nuts. I... Okay. Uh... This sucks so bad. I can't let them just keep these two Obnixili. But, like... Oh, God. I, I basically, we're basically at this point we have to, like, draw a Karn or Bust... Because I'm almost dead. Mono White Devotion was never a menace. It was a good deck, but it wasn't a menace by any stretch of the imagination. There is land interaction, Shana. There's Alpine Moon. Most people don't bother to play it, but it hoses that and it hoses... Um... um Lotus Field. So. Oh my god, this card. No. Mono White Devotion did give those decks a run for their money. Like, it, it's not. I'm, I'm, it was definitely a real deck. Uh, I just don't think it was ever. Like, I don't think you could call it a menace. I think that's pretty disingenuous. Do I think grief gets banned? I don't think so. I think Nadu is going to get banned, and beyond that, I have no idea what else happens. But no, Pioneer's current state is is horrifying, and I don't know how that happened because just like a month or two ago, it was awesome. I don't know what happened. Like, there was, like, five to seven, like, reasonable decks you could play, and now it feels like it's, like, two. It's all vampires and uh, Amalia, right? Vampires, Amalia, and I don't know what the third one is. But I felt like it was... Oh, yeah, Phoenix. Of course it's Phoenix. Oh, and Monogreen. Oh, that's four. Apparently one of those isn't real Blitz, so take notes. Okay. Oh shit, they're coming in. What? Did they not realize? I guess Oh, Johnny's going to flip, and then they're going to, I don't know, kill me? Oh, they're going to don't block. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I Right? Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. I didn't do it. Okay. So I can get map. Map can get uh, Inventor's Fair. Inventor's Fair can get me any artifact I want. Which includes the One Ring. Beep, beep. Inventors is fair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five
one ring play the ring Okay, we're going to one, friends. Hopefully, they don't have any instant speed. Oh, they're playing Bowmaster. Hopefully, they don't have one. Amped Raptor. Okay, they're digging for the Bowmasters, I would think. They flip it to Amped Raptor, but they didn't cast it from their hand, so it doesn't trigger. A little diamonds. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Little diamonds. Should I activate the one ring in response to its trigger? Because I, I feel like that would put me in a better position. Does anyone have an opinion? Because I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> mash buttons i mean that's kind of the deck so draw three okay we got it we got it my mouth she was a cheetah meow meow And if the law don't get her, then I will for little diamonds. Wow, wow. For little diamonds. Meow, meow. For little diamonds. Here's my card, opponent. I mean, you can save us both some time here. Yeah, that's an interesting question, Ram Bright. My personal feeling would be that uh, almost certainly all his dust is probably better, but this deck comes from Susurus, um, who is a legend in the prison uh, archetype community. Um, I don't necessarily know or have an opinion on like de facto which one's better. Uh, I think it's obviously going to be dependent on which matchups you run into. So, um, I need more spells, and my life total is not moving. Yeah, you got to trust in prison, Mike. I'm just going to cast an extra one ring here in case they're trying to be crafty. I don't imagine that they are, and if they were, they'd just kill me now in response to it, but whatever. All right. Do you need more than 48 mana here? No. Sometimes... Sometimes it's like, you know, you just follow your heart. It won't lead you wrong. They're trying to play clock. Well, I got I got some news for them. Okay, here what you do is you just hold priority. So you want to hold down control, and then you just do this. And uh, you really don't have a lot to worry about clockwise unless your client is choking big time. Yeah, they're trying to play clock, but they like it was a joke. Like it was a complete joke if they thought that that was a successful strategy. Like, come on now. Less versatile than Ballista. I mean, I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't realize it was game three. That's fine. Um, yeah, you too, Hotashi. Mardu is a great deck. Yeah, I'm sure they were trying to clock me. It's just like, come on. Like, what, what do you... Like, 
even if you don't know who I am, I think it's pretty disrespectful to your opponent to be like, maybe the clock will beat them. They have eight minutes. Eight minutes? Come on. Uh, so we just drew it up. So let's go. I, I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. If people want to do that, it's fine. I just... I... I what I refer to that as is the uh, the grieving the grieving step. They were in the grieving step. Yeah, I mean it's possible that that's what it was. It's absolutely possible. Hey, thanks for the follow. I'm really glad I got my um, follow alerts working again because they were they were very busted for a while, um, but no longer. And I like them a lot, so. So we're probably against the Through the Breach deck. Being on the play here is great. It's everything you want. It's probably most of the horrible things don't happen until turn three. And by that point, we'll, we should be pretty established and uh, tearing away with this game. Don't need that. Don't want that. Am I grabbing Tower or Inventors is Fair? I am one artifact off of Inventors is Fair being usable, but I think that's what I prefer. There's Paradox Engine, then we get the one ring and we just win the game. Don't think I actually have enough mana, but we'll find out. They could have Kozlex Command here, but that only gets them up to a maximum of four mana next turn. And they're not playing Karn. Uh, yeah, there it is. The biggest danger here is that they go um, Eldrazi Temple into uh, Kicked Sewing Myco Spawn. We can beat that, but it's definitely not fun. Not sure what they're trying to play. Ah, sewing Micah Spawn without Kicker. Good, 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 good. Very, very good. So I don't think Inventor's Fair is the right path to victory here. Because if we get Emrakuld or Toast, um, if I play the Serum Powder, it's minus two mana, but then I start getting rebates on my spells. I don't think Serum Powder is the way to go, and I think I'm supposed to Mystic Forge. Because so we're looking for Karn, any of our zero mana um, Everflowing Chalice or such. Okay, that's not good enough.
So if they have through the breach emerald cool this turn, we're just dead. I mean, there's I don't think there's any way I can beat that. So imagining that they don't have that, how am I going to win this game? It's probably Inventor's Fair. Well, Inventor's Fair into Ring. I don't actually have enough mana for that. Um, and even if I did, I actually don't have three artifacts in play. So Inventor's Fair is not, not making it for us right now. Urza Saga gets us there next turn. So it's probably Urza Saga Paradox Engine Pass, which is pretty weak considering on how far we've come. Uh, playing the Devourer of Destiny doesn't really do anything at all. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to miss the win by a turn, essentially. Which is a shame, but well, we'll see. A kicked sewing Michael Spawn doesn't bother me this now any like pretty much at all. Like if they take my saga, it's fine. If they take me off Tron, it's also fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it's. Not the end of the world. Okay. Okay, just dead. Yeah, cool. Super unfortunate there. All right. Uh, stone brains in. I do. Yeah, Cityscape Leveler is no good here. Neither is Kozilek. And we're just kind of conceding that our Ugin's Labyrinths aren't going to be very powerful, which I think is fine. Uh, is that my only... No, I kept the Paradox Engines in. So we could powder this pretty easily. Losing two mines and a power plant. This is unkeepable. Turn one, Everflowing Chalice with map. I mean, this is really gross if we if the Devourer of Destiny sets us up almost anything. So let's go. Would I rather have the Mystic Forge than the Karn? No. Would I rather have the Mystic Forge than the Paradox Engine? Yes. Okay, we're looking for basically a land. Saga will do. So we go imprint, chalice, map, pass. Turn to Karn, probably get liquid metal coating, probably end the game on the spot there. <laughs> T 
Turn two Karn is pretty hard to beat. I suppose they could have like Boseju, but I think we end up winning anyway through that. Did I lose my forest? Did not. Good. Temple on turn one means nothing. Good. Ayo. Hey Oh, classic Susurus. We don't have a liquid metal coating. Well, I guess I'm taking Stone Brain. Is that really what I want? Gosh, that's all right. Well, do they have a double temple opening? That's the real question. They don't. It's good news. They did have the Boseju. So they'd knock me down a mana. Not finding a land here is definitely not the best. Obviously I can map for the land and then play Stone Brain. Not the best play. Karn does not give me like anything useful at this point. I mean, obviously just putting a one ring in my hand is pretty good. I can put a Cityscape Leveler into my hand. And Ugin's Labyrinth it. Should give me enough mana to play the Serum Powder, which would give me the maximum amount of mana for next turn. Which doesn't actually feel all that great. <laughs> it gets me a higher mana count faster than any other decision here. Uh, sure. Boy, does this feel unimpressive. Now they're going to have, yeah, of course they're going to have TKS there. They can take my stone brain if they want. Takes a stone brain, yeah. So do I want 
a medium sized construct here. Not particularly. Can also block with serum powder if I want to. If they just end up going for breach into Emrakul again or, or Kozlak, uh, I'm going to die anyway. So we'll just see what Mystic Forge gets me, I suppose. So get map. Use map to get another labyrinth. Imprint devourer. They forge. Don't need that. Give me like a, no, that's not what I was looking for, but okay. Okay. Well, let's not get breached. So seven mana for next turn, assuming that my Karn lives. Which is not good enough. Do I want to block for this Karn, or is the one mana better for me? No, I want to block for Karn. This is a non kicked Mycosin or Mycospawn. Yeah, okay. So now I can. Now I can Stone Brain there. Um, now I can Stone Brain there. Emrakul. But I have to not play the One Ring to do it. Which kind of sucks. Uh, so we're, we're going to um, mind stun the, the Breaches, not the uh, Emrakuls. Uh, let's see if there's a better draw for me here. Sure. I can play it and still stone brain. Yeah. To the beach. Didn't have one in hand. Just two one rings and a world breaker. Brutal. Okay, well, gonna lose my Mystic Forge here, but I've got a one ring after that and they don't. So theoretically, I'll be okay. Until we're not. I mean, they're just playing World Breaker here to take down my Mystic Forge, for sure. Oh, they're not. That's very interesting choice. Mystic Forge is going to go ahead and feel disrespected. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect.
I don't need that. Don't need that. I mean, I guess it's going to go to my hand. Perfect. Cool. So this turn we can go Karn Bridge. Uh, theoretically, they're going to take out my one ring. They could take out my Everflowing Chalice that has four counters on it, and I'm not super worried about that. Didn't take a screenshot of their deck list. Probably should have. Not worried. Should be worried. Not worried. If they leave the one ring, I think we just get Paradox Engine and kill them. How Karn kill ring? How Karn kill ring? What? Oh, Breck. Yeah, they Breck. They Brecken. So, is there something better on top? Oop. Karen. So I guess if they have another world breaker, I die. But outside of that, pretty safe. I guess they could just have like another Boseju, like, I don't know, they're playing green, they can have lots of outs for this. Hopefully they don't. Yeah, they got it, they got it, right? Yeah, they're just gonna have another world breaker, huh? But I mean, I think we're not favored there. I really should have won the game because of having liquid metal coating, but we just don't have one. And that that just killed us. So is command any other any permanent? It's not. It's just creatures. So I think I'd swap the second Trinisphere for the first liquid metal coating. I, yeah, I mean, Alicartes, I'm not going to disagree with, like, the build of someone who I consider to be very, very, very good. Cavern's a wasted spot inside. I don't know about that one. I, again, I'm assuming that the person who built this deck knows what they're doing with these things, and I don't. But I think I would make the second Trinisphere into a uh, liquid metal coating. Like, I, I just don't ever assume that I know better than the person who made and did quite well with this deck. They went 17th in a challenge. But for my myself, that's the change I would make. I would play the Liquid Metal Coating. Gigantha, we don't have a 7-drop to imprint on this Ugin's Labyrinth. We do have turn 3 Tron, plus 1 Ring, plus Paradox Engine. It's probably good enough in the dark. If this is energy, probably win this game. So they showed Gigantha. And it is. Oh, with the monkey. That's horrifying because we're a Karn deck. But hopefully we win anyway. Could also be a turn to Blood Moon, which we can beat, but... Absolutely, Alucard has, and you should. I mean, that's part of the joy of playing Magic the Gathering. But uh, I don't assume I'm making a deck better when I do that. I'm just assuming I make it better for me. Chalice. Okay, good.
Yeah, cat's very strong. Oh, nerdy senpai. What up, player? Uh, Alucartes would like you to notice them, senpai. Hello? What did you get finished doing? I'm not a good streamer, so I don't know how to plug you properly, but I'm sure someone does. Mine. Hey, we're going to have a whole cavalcade of follows going here while my opponent's got a bunch of triggers. We're going to play a one ring and hopefully you're playing some MTG arena. Well, I hope that went excellently for you. Pretty new magic. So I've been playing lots and learning. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for the raid. I will try to give you, can I give you a follow from here? Can I just do that? I bet I can pow boom all right and uh some point in the future i will maybe attempt to raid you although i usually don't raid people playing arena just because this is, tends to be a magic online crowd here that is uh focused on the magic online formats uh, but that's okay little little cross-platform love it's not always a bad thing My game looks like a spreadsheet. Man, they got a they got a whole lot of mana going on. Yeah, Magic Online is uh not very friendly if you don't know what you're doing. So if you have a friend uh or or someone who's willing to teach you to play Magic Online, you should um because uh you will lose a lot. Oh, thank you. S O no, no, it's okay. Thanks, Spider, for the attempt. Senpai. Boom. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. That's a great way to to do to do the learning. All right, so let's go Labyrinth. Uh, now I have access to eight mana, so we're gonna tap eight, play Everflowing Chalice, and then play a new one ring. Oh, of course. That's just, that's uh, that's pretty normal within the community. So if you're new to magic and or new to streaming magic, you should know that's a, it's a, usual thing to do when someone comes on into your channel so get used to it because it's a super useful way to build the community build up other people etc etc my opponent's getting a little bit locked out here by my, by my one rings which is exactly what we're looking for and now we just combo them out So tap to draw some cards, tap to play Court Tapper. We've been streaming for a long time, but we only just met. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Ah, oh, yeah, I mean, everyone should be doing it. And if not, their mods should be doing it. Mods, get your stuff together. Here's my Paradox Engine. Here's my Court Tapper. Here's my Game Win. If you want to stick in this... Mods should find the people to raid. Sometimes. Definitely a thing you can do as a mod. They're at 28. Gosh. Gonna need a whole bunch of mana. Oh, they're off it. Okay. Trinosphere is coming in here. Uh, let's go Kozilex out. I know I won with them last time. But that was because all my Karns got exiled, which I don't imagine is a usual happening. All right.
All right. What are we doing here? On the draw against energy, they have kept their seven. This. Seems reasonable. If they have like turn two blood moon, we're probably toast anyway on the draw, but this is pretty good. I mean, if we had a uh, Ugin's Labyrinth with a seven drop, I'd be obviously overjoyed, but uh, we're going to lead on Saga considering they threw down the Mesa. One assumes they're going to do some like damping sphere nonsense and we're just going to crush them by going like ever flowing chalice core tapper that nonsense. Uh, although mm, if that's the case, I probably should have played my chalice there. Well, thank you, nerdy senpai. Enjoy your chores. I hope they go well. I folded laundry just now, just before I started. I did my laundry last night. Laundry for me tends to be a two-day process. It doesn't need to be. It just is. I could do it faster. I just don't. Amped Raptor. Okay. Eating freed chicken. Is that different than fried chicken? Oh, no. Static prison. No, that card I needed. Chat. Chat. One-handed typing. Got it, got it, got it. No, I gotcha, I gotcha. Fried chicken to me really is a two-handed food, though. Like, one hand is just, you're gambling. There's so much gambling happening with one-handed eating a fried chicken. It's just like, is it worth it? I don't know, man. Not blocking this. Let's see if I can get a little extra mana going. Second Amped Raptor. They're getting jacked over there. Ajani? Okay. Not not relevant to the battlefield. Love that for me. Cool. Okay, surge node or manifold key. I think it's key. Because then I can go charge this, untap that. Uh, play inventors is fair. Play serum powder. Play cornucopia on zero. Maybe I shouldn't play the cornucopia there because it's like possible I'll need it to trigger Paradox Engine next turn. I do need to get a one ring going, but the Inventor's Fair should get me there. Because next turn I have like 10 mana. So only taking seven here. He said somehow without fear. Do I split up my counters in case they have a second static prison or is a second static prison just going to kill me? I think the second static prison kills me anyway. So we just have to all in here and just hope they don't have it, which sucks, but it is what it is. Okay. Pride is fine. Okay. So I think we're okay.
Good draw. They didn't have the second static prison last turn, so here's hoping that they just miss this turn. And we should be golden. I do enjoy that they like turn one static prison my expedition map, and it just that's been great. I'm so glad. Bone crushes their own Ajani. Okay, okay. Or their own cat token so they can flip their Ajani and just... They're preparing for other turns that they're not going to get. That's fine. Oh, hasting a Ragavan against my ring protection. Great choice. Love that for you. Oh, I don't have ring protection. Oh, because they stomped. Did I just die? Oh, I just died for Exaxes. The Samp. I don't know what the Samp is, but yeah, the uh, Bone Crusher has uh, flavor text that kills me here. I always forget about that. I mean, wait, no, but they can't target me. They can't target me, so I'm okay, right? Yeah, 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 yeah we're okay. <laughs> Close one. I'm trying my best, Jen and I, but, but thank you for the permission. Here's my Trinisphere. Why am I playing Trinisphere? I don't know. Why are they still playing this game? He's drawing infinite cards good. No, this is Patrick. Wait, none of those voices make sense. Uh, Sirius Tower is probably good play. I don't know. Here's my Karn. Opponent, you died again. I mean. Okay, cool. So a little 3-2 here. Um, would have done slightly better with the liquid metal coating in the deck. So I think I would cut the second transfer for the liquid metal coating as sideboarding it in never really seemed to be um, great. And I think you're going to run into more Tron decks that you want to beat than you are going to run into decks where you want to board in one Trinisphere. Uh, if that was the goal, or maybe he had a sideboard plan that involved boarding in exactly both the transfers for i guess the two causal x or the two of the extra paradox engines generally speaking this build seems really good i love the one mystic forge um it is sometimes better than the one ring and it's also an out to bowmaster sometimes um the core tapper ever flowing chalice surge node manifold key stuff i mean the numbers here are interesting I, I do think though it's like it's really great to have this mana engine on top of uh the tron mana engine as two um different opportunities to go big um into like turn three four or five where you're going to theoretically resolve uh mystic forge one ring or karn and then just win the game so all seems pretty great um, that said, if you're seeing this in the future on the YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, check out any of my other videos you're interested in it, and let me, let me know what, uh, what other, what other decks in modern you want to see, or how I should have played this better, because I should be a better player by this point.